finally some welcome rain across West Texas. We'll tell you if more is on the way tonight. And a Texan is among the dead in the terrorist bombing in Saudi Arabia. We'll have more on this story for you coming up. Good evening. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Jay Hendricks. Melissa Hendricks is on special assignment. Our top story tonight, a drenching rain. Some areas of the Permian Basin got a steady downpour last night, while others didn't. Chief Meteorologist Tom T. Teller is now live in Big Spring tonight. He joins us to tell us exactly how much rain we got, Tom. Well, Jay, that's right. Some areas of the Permian Basin saw good amounts of rain over where I am in Big Spring. Not that good, only 4 one hundredths last night, while the Midland Odessa area saw, temp uh, saw rainfall amounts, I should say, up around 1 to 2 inches. Let's take a look at how much rainfall we did have last night. Here's what we had officially from the National Weather Service. The highest amount so far, 2.30 inches around the Goldsmith area. Now, I had a couple of viewers calling around current where they said they had 2.5 inches. Shane Deal, my skywatcher over in Monaghan's, had uh, rainfall amounts about 1.5 inches. Big Lake, look at that, uh, up the northern portion, just north of Big Lake, in northern portions of Reagan County, 1.26 inches and 9,700 officially around the middle of Odessa area. Now we go to Storm Tracker Live Doppler Radar, find out what's going on with the radar right now. We do have some areas of a few showers forming up across portions of Mitchell County up towards the Snyder area. I can see those just off to my east here in the Big Spring area. Also a few showers around the Lamisa area. But uh, not as much activity as we saw last night, but things are starting to get cranked up. So this chance of showers and thunderstorms will be in the forecast. We'll tell you how long that chance will be in the forecast here in the weather forecast in a few minutes. Okay? All right, very good, Tom. Thanks. We look forward to hearing from you later in the newscast. Rain in West Texas is always a cause for celebration. Yolanda Vasquez now joins us live with more on the impact of the real rainstorm. Yolanda? Well, Jay, last week we suffered through triple-digit temperatures, but today we're surrounded by pools of water. The weather may be unpredictable, but one thing's for sure, the rain was a welcome sight. Cloudy skies covered Odessa most of the day, but remnants of last night's rain was visible on the streets and dirt roads in town. Most of the precipitation was from showers and thunderstorms during the afternoon and evening last night is more uh, heavier thunderstorms and the later stuff. Uh, during the early morning hours, more gentle rains. This map from the National Weather Service shows last night's levels. The area seen in the blue received at least an inch of rain, while other parts like Andrews County seen in the yellow received close to four inches. Here in West Odessa, this pool of water is all that's left from last night's rainfall. But some residents in this area pay close attention to the amount of rain they get for a good reason. And I water those trees across over there that, and all of these things here. Doris Belote gets up every day to water her plants. But this morning when she woke up, she found two and a half inches of water in her rain gauge. Oh, I was so thankful to God for that rain because I'll tell you right now, I needed it. And another thing, you know, our water levels is low out here. So I know that if we can keep having some of these rains now, that it seems as though that it's coming in, that we will uh, get a better water level. Now, last night's rain wasn't enough to combat the dry conditions of West Texas. Fire officials say we're still not in the clear. People do have a false sense of security now because of, it, because of the rain that we experienced. And it just wasn't enough. The conditions are still going to be drought-like as soon as the temperature goes back up. Now, I know it may not seem like it, but forecasters are saying we could see more rain in the next two days. And as the saying goes, all good things must come to an end, and drier conditions will return. Reporting live in Midland, this is Yolanda Vasquez. Back to you. Yeah, we sure enjoy it while it's there, can't we? That's for sure. Okay, thanks, Yolanda. <laughs> Even though they were banned by Midland's commissioner's court, firework stands will be open for business in the county. But the sales may not last. Today in Midland County Court, a hearing kicked off to see if fireworks ban is legal. That's after Truckload Fireworks Company filed a lawsuit against the company. Against the county, that is. They say their rights are being violated by the ban. Today, a judge put a temporary restraint on the ban until Friday morning, making it tempor temporarily legal to sell or shoot off fireworks in the county. That means fireworks will be for sale tomorrow on the Rankin Highway, and you can buy them and pop them. Fireworks will be for sale and for use, and you don't have to worry about being ticketed, and you don't have to worry about anybody saying anything to you. County Judge Jeff Norwood says on Friday the county will get to present their side, then it's possible that the ban could be reinstated. Families across the state are waiting for word about their loved ones in Saudi Arabia. A Houston man is one of the 19 Americans who have been killed in a truck bombing that ripped through an American Air Force building near Dahran. 
Military sources confirm that Sergeant Millard, Millard Campbell of Angleton High School died in yesterday's blast. Troops from several Texas bases were also in the building at the time of the blast. Troops from Goodfellow Air Force Base near San Angelo are listed in good condition. 22 people based in Abilene are among the injured, but the base commander said today all of those injuries appear to be minor. A parked fuel truck blew up just outside of the military housing complex. It is the deadliest uh, terrorist bombing ever against Americans in the area. A grand jury is hearing evidence against a Texas mother accused of stabbing her two sons to death. The members of the grand jury will decide if there is enough evidence to indict Darlie Routier for capital murder. Six-year-old Devin and five-year-old Damien were stabbed to death earlier this month in their home. Their mother called 911, claiming that an intruder had broken in and attacked her and her sons. But police officers told the grand jury today they found no evidence of an intruder and believe Darlie Routier is the killer. A prospective juror told the judge today she thinks Michael Irvin is innocent. Needless to say, she won't be included on the panel. In fact, seven possible jurors were dismissed today as attorneys try to find 12 people to hear evidence. Irvin faces felony cocaine possession charges and a marijuana possession charge as well. The Dallas wide receiver could be in the courtroom for up to three weeks of the trial. Coming up next here on News West 9, we head out to the rodeo, in fact, to the Big Spring Rodeo. Janina Geary has a live report for us in just a few minutes. And you'll also meet a man with an inspiring story to tell. Stay with us.
Patients who fall through the cracks. The fund paid for the parts, and Allen Orthotics and Prosthetics shaped the man a new leg. Well, I'm very grateful that there's people out there that can help people like me, you know. Christino has had a real good attitude, and uh, he's improved very quickly. He spent a few weeks with a cane, but before long, Armendariz was on his own two feet and back on the golf course. I told him maybe every time I hit the ball, I was going to fall. Uh, he's able to perform most of the uh, activities of daily, daily living independently now. Doctors say attitude plays a big role in how quickly patients recover. Armendariz is proof of that. Glad to be walking and grateful that he's not in debt. In Midland, Andrew Resnick, News West 9. The National Amputee Fund is a brand new fund based in San Diego. Cristino Armendariz was the first person to receive its benefits. For 63 years now, cowboys from all over the country have been a part of the Big Spring Rodeo. This year promises to be its best yet. The event gets started in just a couple of hours, and we'll go for a preview now. Janine and Gary is standing by live in Big Spring to tell us more about tonight's festivities. Janine? Well, Jay, tonight's show should be great. The headliner at this year's event was named Specialty Act of the Year by the Pro Rodeo Cowboys Association for the last seven years in a row. John Payne is one of the main attractions at the Big Spring 63rd Annual Rodeo. And if you look closely, you'll notice that this cowboy rides with one hand. He's known as the one-armed bandit. Uh, the uh, one-armed bandit, what you don't forget is the name. And then once you see me, you don't forget me. So I get credit for everything I do, whether it's good or bad, and I try to do more good than bad. John lost his arm back in 1973 when he was electrocuted, almost to death. But John is not sad about his loss. He's just grateful to be alive. Usually when I tell somebody that, they say, was it an accident? And I said, no, I always wanted to be the one-armed bandit. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I was killed for three minutes, and I received CPR and was brought back to life. John is an entertainer from Shiba, Oklahoma, but takes his award-winning act on the road much of the year. During his show, John stacks his pickup truck, trailer, and animals all on top of each other, and then he himself gets on top. I do the impossible. Um, if I told them what I did, they wouldn't believe it. I now, Jay, they say seeing is believing, so you're just going to have to come out here and check it out yourself. Live on the Big Spring Rodeo, I'm Janina Gitter. Back to you. All right, the festivities all get started, what, about 8 o'clock? 8.30. 8.30. Mm -hmm. Okay. Take your umbrella with you. You may need it. Okay. All right, thanks, Janine. The scenery along Interstate 20 near Midland will soon become a lot more dramatic. A full-size oil rig is being fixed up at FWA Drilling right now. When finished, the company will take it to the Petroleum Museum and set it up as an exhibit out on the front lawn. The Petroleum Museum showcases mostly older oil equipment, so this new exhibit should add some diversity to the museum. When we get visitors who are not familiar with the industry or international visitors, they'll be able to see the, uh, the current level of technology in the industry, and in addition to seeing all of the, the history that's so important. To by the way, today, local oil men and the folks from the museum held a barbecue to celebrate the big new exhibit. And according to Andrew Resnick, it was some pretty good barbecue. We'll straight ahead here on News West 9 and 6, Chief Meteorologist Tom T. Vertello will join us back live from Big Spring. He's out there for the rodeo, and we'll have the latest on the forecast. But first, here's a look at today's closing numbers from Wall Street. The Dow closed down 36 and a half points today. getting hot again, and you know what that means. Mark again. Low prices at Lusky's. Darrell, there's a big sale blowing in on hats and jeans, shirts, everything marked down. Uh, like I got these new Laredo boots at Lusky's yesterday for nearly a song, Darrell. I'll be. In fact, pay attention, Darrell. You might get your wife a new pair of Laredo boots. Get old Lusky's. A Texas tradition since 1919. Lusky's Western Store. Ba -da -ba 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 -ba. Here's today's News West 9 Energy Report.
West 9, KWES TV. Even though it's very hot, we can beat the Easter and Toyota of Midland's Cool Green Sales Event. We're cooling down the interest rate on some of Toyota's finest cars and trucks. Cool off in style in a classy Avalon or sleep in this memory. Stay cool, drive off in a new Corolla. And if you're thinking truck, you can't buy a cooler or more powerful Tacoma anywhere. We can't promise relief from the heat, but we sure can on interest rates during the Cool Green Sales Event at Toyota of Midland. At Six Flags Fiesta Texas Theme Park, it's the all-new Joker's Revenge. That has Arch Rifle the Joker is up to some new tricks. Drive backwards at incredible speeds on his twisting, turning, looping steel roller coaster. Unexpected thrills from the twisted Joker. It's the only ride on the high on Earth, and it's only at the new Six Flags Fiesta Texas in San Antonio. Lots of rainfall for a big part of the West Texas area throughout the night last night. Meteorologist Tom T. Teller is now standing by live in Big Spring. Side of the Big Spring Cowboy Reunion Rodeo going to be kicking off tonight. And Tom, uh, another chance for rain tonight? Yes, Jay. In fact, right now I'm looking off over towards uh, eastern Howard County, over towards Mitchell County right now. I can see a few Thunderheads trying to line up. So some activity finally starting to get going after we've had the daytime heating. It still remains somewhat humid across the Permian Basin. So I think more showers and thunderstorms will be in the forecast this evening. Let's go ahead and take a look outside on the sky cams right now. Here's what we're looking at across the Big Spring area and most of the Permian Basin. Temperatures in the upper 80s really all day today. 87 degrees right now. Look at the dew point though. 68 degrees. That's giving us humidity levels at 53 percent. Almost unheard of here in West Texas this time of the year, but it remains very moist. So lots of fuel for thunderstorms and southeast winds at 16 miles an hour continue to pump in moisture right off the Gulf of Mexico. Our high for today, 88 degrees. That's because we had a lot of morning clouds that kept temperatures down. Last night's rain, 9,700 officially across the Midland Odessa area out at the airport, bringing our yearly rainfall total there up a little bit to 3.18 inches. That's good news, but we're still running about an inch and a half below normal on the year so far. Taking a look at Storm Tracker Live Doppler Radio, let's get you up to date on what's going on. Not too many uh, thunderstorms out there this evening. One north of the Andrews area around Florey there. Also a few north of the La Mesa area around O'Donnell and other showers and thunderstorms around the Snyder area. But for the most part, though, not too much activity firing up right now. But as the evening progresses, we'll see showers and thunderstorms continue to build up. Let's go to the wider view of the Doppler radar right now and look across portions of West Texas. Around the Lubbock area, they've really had a lot of rain up there today, almost up to two inches of rain. So if you're heading up there this evening, watch out. An urban and stream flood advisory remains in effect up there for the rest of the evening. Other showers and thunderstorms firing up over mountain sections, but the Midland Odessa area are really not looking at too many showers right now. We'll go on to the National Satellite picture and show you what's going on because we do have lots of moisture moving in. Uh, from the Gulf of Mexico, also an upper little disturbance moving in there across portions of California. I think this is going to keep raining the forecast. A little bit better chances coming up tomorrow the way it looks right now. The Texas uh, temperatures in the satellite picture, again, you can see some of the clouds there uh, with some rain showers across the area. Mixed bag of temperatures generally in the 80s and 90s, so not too bad a day across the state of Texas for the, uh, the last week of June. Going to the forecast map for tomorrow, again, we're going to have that upper level disturbance moving in from the northwest. Plenty of moisture in place, and once we get the daytime heating, Looks like more showers and thunderstorms will be firing off across the area tomorrow afternoon. Let's take a look at the forecast for the rest of this evening. Looking great for uh, a few things outdoors. You might want to have the umbrella with you just to, just to be on the safe side because we'll have scattered showers and thunderstorms around the area. Temperatures dropping down to the mid-70s, it looks like, by 10 o'clock tonight with southeast winds 10 to 20 miles an hour. And they will be gusty at times around thunderstorms. And then for the rest of tonight, we'll see thunderstorms continue and showers scattered about the area. Some could contain some heavy rainfall, so we'll have to watch out for that. They'll continue until about 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning with temperatures dropping down to about 72 degrees overnight with southeast winds 5 to 15 miles an hour. And then coming up tomorrow morning, probably the mostly cloudy skies, depending on how much rain we get, we will see some peaks of sunshine. Now that's going to warm things up to 84 degrees by noontime with southeast winds 5 to 15. And tomorrow afternoon, moisture in place, daytime heating. That will equal scattered showers and thunderstorms around the area. Once again, tomorrow afternoon, look at those temperatures. Very nice temperatures into the lower 90s there with southeast winds 10 to 20, and they will be gusty around thunderstorms. And here's a look at the Storm Tracker 5-day forecast. We'll keep a chance of isolated showers and thunderstorms any of those afternoons.
with temperatures really not too bad as we head into towards July. Temperatures in the mid 90s and nighttime lows will be in the mid to upper 60s to, to the lower 70s. So really not too bad. And don't forget coming up tonight about 8, 8.30 and continuing on through Saturday night. They're having the 63rd Annual Big Spring Rodeo out here at the fairgrounds and rodeo winners. So you don't want to miss that. Plus tomorrow morning they're having the Big Spring Rodeo Golf Tournament too. Uh, it's a four-man scramble with one of those being a cowboy from the rodeo. So you don't want to miss out on that. And this goes help to help out the Just, Justin Booth Crisis Fund. So that's happening at Comanche Trails Golf Course coming up tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. So that in addition to the rodeo. So a lot of things going on across the Big Spring area over the next few days, Jay. All right, Tom, very good. And we'll look forward to maybe some more rain tonight. That'd be nice. That would be nice, Jay. We could take it. All right, thanks, Tom. Coming up next in sports, the all-women's uh, baseball team, the Silver Bullets, will be in action in Midland tonight. Manager Phil Negro is hoping his team will get a fair shake. We'll tell you why in just a moment. These are some of the reasons why Dodge's popularity is rising faster than any other American car and truck line. These are the reasons you can get a great deal on one of our most popular cars, Dodge Intrepid. Like up to $1,500 cash savings or 1.9% financing. Plus, Intrepid offers more standard passenger room power and equipment than Ford Taurus. So come in today and discover all the things that make Dodge Intrepid so popular. See the friendly Dodge dealer near you. Well, my little crustacean friends, are we off to a swell start. Welcome to Lobster Land. How can I help you? Yeah, give me two of your best. Hmm. That would be a Binky and Mrs. Flanagan. I'm sure you'll provide them with a good home. Oh, yeah. Like lobster, you love Golden Corral Steak and Lobster, a half-pound sirloin and North Atlantic lobster tail, just $9.99, for a limited time only at Golden Corral. When Consumer's Digest reviewed competitive luxury cars, Lincoln Town Car was found in a familiar position. On a pedestal, awarded a Best Buy for a smooth, quiet ride, generous room, and comfort. Once again, in a competition where value reigns supreme, Town Car ended up exactly where it belongs. Lincoln, what a luxury car should be. Now lease Lincoln Town Car at Consumer's Digest Best Buy for just $4.59 a month. Save on the Yamaha Wave Venture at Golden Yamaha. Sale priced at just $139.95 per month. The Wave Venture with the largest storage capacity in the industry. Only at Golden Yamaha in Odessa. Time now for a look at sports. And Mike joins us with, unfortunately, the bad news in sports. And we've had a, quite a bit of problem with football players and drugs lately. They've been in the news. Michael Irvin is not the only drug case pending this summer. And, of course, he may be very interested and maybe a little encouraged by Bam Morris's plight. The Pittsburgh Steelers running back pleaded guilty to felony marijuana possession today. Police found a duffel bag with six pounds of grass in the trunk of Morris's car. In exchange for his guilty plea, prosecutors in the case are recommending no jail time, six months probation, a $7,000 fine, 200 hours of community service, and random drug testing as a punishment. One cocaine charge against Morris was dropped. So, Michael Irvin must feel pretty good about his situation. Irvin's charges really do not seem as serious as Bam's. Jury selection was again the focus today. Eight people sent home after telling lawyers they already have opinions about Irvin's guilt or innocence. One move from Irvin's lawyers that filed a motion to let the judge and not the jury sentence Irvin if he happens to be found guilty. All right, you want a good, little good news? Anthony Edwards, an eight-year NFL veteran, right now a wide receiver for the Arizona Cardinals, puts on summer camps for kids all over the country. Today, tomorrow, and Friday, he is in Fort Stockton giving something back to the game he loves. When I was a youth growing up, I didn't get that, you know, and even the Pop Warner, I didn't get to play Pop Warner, so I enjoyed uh, seeing any any kind of celebrity status uh, person coming around me and just telling me the right way to go and things that they do uh, in life to get better, and so that I, I'm enjoying it, you know, that I'm able to give back. In three years of managing the all-female Silver Bullets baseball team, the only thing Phil Necro is disappointed in is the fact the team loses more often than he thinks it should. And not because of the effort the Silver Bullets, but because the men's teams bring in ringers. That was not the case last year in Midland, though. It was a good game. The Permian Basin All-Star team beat the Bullets by two runs. But too often, Necro's team is severely overmatched, and he's sick of it. All we want to do is when we come to the ballpark, realize, and the fans realize, that both teams have a chance to win the ball game. And that's all we can ask for, and that's what we're trying to, trying to do, is, is both teams being at least 
competitive on both sides of it. You know, he's been blown out a lot of times in the past few years, and we don't get anything out of it. The other team doesn't get anything out of it except off the way and say, we kicked the unit out of those women. In fact, one of the silver bullets says the team batted against Ron Guidry in one of its exhibition games earlier this year. That's former New York Yankee and Cy Young Award winner Ron Guidry. 29 NBA teams take a test tonight. It's the draft. Last year, the biggest story was this guy, 6'11", high school senior Kevin Garnett, whom the Minnesota Timberwolves selected with the fifth pick. He was a success, and now there are two high schoolers jumping to the pros, Kobe Bryant from Philadelphia and Jermaine O'Neal from Columbia, South Carolina. Also a record 36 underclassmen are entered into this year's sweepstakes. Philadelphia owns the first pick in the draft, which happens to start at 6.30. The Mavs pick ninth. Houston and San Antonio do not have choices in the first round. Let's finish off with Wimbledon. There's the famous center court there on the grounds. Katarina Studakova in the far court and serving to Monica Seles. And Studakova comes up with a studly effort with a 7-5 win in the first set. Now Monica Seles did kind of regroup and take the second set, but then in the third, it's Studakova again winning 6-4. to four. She upsets Monica Seles in the first round. Seles is very earliest loss in 18 Grand Slam events. First round loss. This is her earliest. There have been a number of top seeds falling out. Now it's moving to the women's side. Yeah, it has. A, there's been an upset bug going around Wimbledon. Steffi Groff, her knee still okay? Still, it, they said it looked fine yesterday. She won easily. Okay, very good. Thanks, Mike. Meteorologist Tom T. Vertella will join us again in just a minute with the latest on the forecast. We'll be right back. wanted a Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo but thought you couldn't afford one, think again. Presenting the Gold Key Plus program at your Texas Jeep and Eagle dealer, where you can get into a Grand Cherokee with zero down at just $366 a month. Zero down at just $366 a month. Only at your Texas Jeep and Eagle dealer. Take advantage of this deal today, and you'll be able to do all the things you never thought you could. See your Texas Jeep and Eagle dealer.
This land has taken care of my family for three generations. And all it took was sunlight, rain, and more work each year than most people do in a lifetime. I do one thing, I do it well. Now, get this extra bonus with the purchase of any new GMC pickup. A Stetson hat at no extra cost. Stetson hats and GMC. Two sure signs of quality and workmanship. Get them both today before this offer ends at your West Texas GMC dealer. There's never been a better time to save on music than right now at Circuit City. Hurry in today and you'll get from $10 to $50 worth of CDs free when you buy any home CD player. Like this Pioneer 25-disc home CD changer with remote for only $219.97, including $20 worth of free CDs. Plus, every CD is just $11 or less for a limited time. That's right, all your favorite artists for just $11 or less. Circuit City, you can't find a lower price on audio. We guarantee it. Sony Television Sales and Service, Herald's Electronics. Thank you for watching KS9, KWES TV. I like planes. I was on a plane the other day and I was.